My name's Chinghi Huang. I've been cooking for my family and friends since I was five years old, helping my grandmother in the family home. It was the start of a lifelong affair with food, a passion that's become my career, writing cookery books and running a food business. It's my mission in life to show people that Chinese food is not all MSG, orange gloopy sauces and greasy prawn balls. In this program, I'll show you some insider tips that'll help you cook fresh, healthy versions of some of the most popular Chinese takeaway dishes in your own kitchen. There's my chicken chow mein cooked for some Beijing-bound Olympic rowers. If it's as tasty as this, we'll love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you the secrets of my fresh, quick and easy version of beef in oyster sauce. Garlic, ginger, chilies, holy trinity of Chinese cooking. There's my healthy, tasty take on sweet and sour pork with egg fried rice. Mmm, that's the best egg fried rice I've ever tasted, I have to say. And demonstrate the importance of a delicate touch in the kitchen. Give it a good bashing, okay? I love cooking simple, easy Chinese food, especially takeaway favourites reinvented to make them really fresh and delicious and healthy. A perfect example is chicken chow mein, and it's one of my favourite takeouts. I've got here chicken breast, very thinly slice the chicken. If you slice the chicken really thinly, then the dish will just cook in a matter of minutes, especially on a high heat. Good sharp cleaver is always useful. Put this into a bowl. And I'm just going to create a delicious marinade for the chicken. So, in with about a heap teaspoon of Chinese five spice powder. And that's wonderfully aromatic and it's got citron, peppercorn, star anise, fennel, cloves and cinnamon. So it's absolutely full of flavour. To just give it colour, I've got here some dark soy sauce. As that cooks, going to look all lovely and smoky and salty at the same time. In with some hot chilli sauce. That's optional. If you don't like chilli, you don't need to add it. Now, all we do is just give this a good mix. I always feel that when you handle your food, it gives it more flavour. Something my grandmother taught me. Next, I've got a pan there of boiling water. So I'm just going to add in about a good handful of yellow she noodles. Now these are dry wheat flour noodles. You can use whatever noodles you like. But traditionally the Chinese would use a thin noodle just like this one. So all this needs is about three minutes in boiling water. While that's cooking, I'm just going to very quickly chop up some vegetables. Some long thin strips of red pepper, then some sliced spring onion. And you'll need a handful of bean sprouts. So the noodles just need to just check, so best thing is just to try and grab a piece, but be careful because it's hot, and then just prick it with your finger. And if it's really al dente, you still see slight give in the middle, that's good. Drain the noodles, rinse under cold water to stop them cooking, then add a few drops of sesame oil to stop them sticking together. Now, the meat has been marinating for a couple of minutes to get all that flavour in. Next, with some corn flour, a heaped teaspoon in with the marinated chicken. This is going to help seal the juices of the meat. When you go to a Chinese restaurant or a takeaway, most people always ask me, oh, how do you get the chicken so tender and delicious and succulent? And this is why, because as it cooks, corn flour protects all those juices inside. Now, for the fun bit, we need the wok nice and hot. So you're probably thinking, what kind of wok? But I'm going to tell you how to choose your wok later. So the wok is smoking. In with a little bit of vegetable oil or groundnut oil or sunflower oil. I personally like groundnut oil. I think it's wonderful and really fragrant. But at this stage, we can add the chicken. In with the chicken. Now as you add the chicken in, it's good just to let it settle a little bit just to seal one side of the meat and then we're going to turn it over and seal the other side. Give it a good stir. Great. So it's time to turn. We've got some gorgeous smoky brown bits on the chicken 
and that's from the side spice. Now, in with all the vegetables, apart from the spring onions, chunky peppers, you can add some courgettes, slice the sage if you like. In with some bean sprouts now. Give that a good stir. And really the more delicate vegetables at the end of the stir fry process. Now with yellow she noodles, give that a good stir in. Chow mein comes from the word, the Mandarin word for chow mein, and chow just means stir fry and yin is noodle, so stir fried noodle. In with about a tablespoon, I think, of some light soy sauce. And this is for saltiness. A little bit of fragrant sesame oil, just at the end. Finally, the spring onions, just for flavor and that last minute freshness before we serve. And that's it. The perfect tang yin. In with the gorgeous, delicious noodle. Taste. Mmm. That looks smackingly good. To prove that Chinese food can be perfectly balanced, healthy, and nutritious, I want to try out my dishes on some people who watch what they eat very carefully. One of our Beijing bound Olympic teams. I'm in Caversham to meet some of the leading members of the Women's Olympic Rowing Squad. Be careful, guys. They've been on the water for almost four hours, so hopefully they'll be hungry. The lead boat in the Women's Squad is a quad skull, and I'll cook my chicken chow mein for the crew. Aha! Hello. Hi, ladies! Hungry athletes. Hungry <laughs> athletes, good. Wow. Great stuff. I've got chicken chow mein. Hey. I hope you like. Smell good. So <laughs> who's going to be the boxes. first? Debbie. Debbie speaks Chinese. Oh, really? Wow, ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao. You want to use a knife? Wow, that's brilliant. Wait, so does anyone cook Chinese? Do you like cooking Chinese? Not often. So tuck in, let me know what you think. It's a bit spicy. We like spicy. Have a taste. Wow, thank you. Pleasure. Very tasty. Yeah? Very nice. Thumbs yeah. up. Mm. Thumbs up. Cool. Really good. What do you eat normally when you're training? Really, we just have to have a balanced diet, but, mm. you know, lots of it. So much more than a normal person would eat, but... So a lot um, of calories. Yeah. A lot of carbs, a lot of protein. A lot of carbs. So this stuff is perfect, right? Perfect, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's quick yeah, and it easy, right? Yeah. After... It's delicious, more to the point. <laughs> <laughs> So my Chinese food ticks all the boxes for these rowers who need nutritious, healthy, tasty and filling food. Catherine Granger, the senior member of the team, has volunteered to be shown how to cook it so she can wow her teammates later. So first up for Catherine, the essential piece of kit to cook Chinese food at home. I'm going to arm you with an essential, okay, yes. which is the wok. Right. There's so many to choose from. If you don't have gas, you can get electric woks. For gas hobs, there are non-stick varieties and the sort I'd most recommend, the wooden-handled carbon steel wok. Long wooden handle yeah. that's unseasoned. And seasoning the wok just means that you want to create a blackened effect on the wok. Okay. It's a coating. Okay. And that is going to give it a gorgeous wok hay flavour. You prefer that over these ones? I like seasoning a wok. Okay. It's very traditional. It takes me back to my grandparents and to, um. you know, my mother teaching me how to cook the first time. Oh. But nowadays time is short and I appreciate that. So yeah. I actually have two. I also have a non-stick wok. To really get the wok to sit on your gas oh. stove, get a wok stand. Okay. Okay. Because this is going to make sure... From? I've you... never seen a wok stand. Well, they look like this okay. and you can get them, you know, in any cook shop. Okay, and okay. then just place that over there, be careful obviously the flames, and this just helps to sit the wok nicely. Okay, clever. Okay? Because look, otherwise, you know, yeah. the food will go everywhere, yeah, it's I a hazard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we want to get some oil in there, so you could use groundnut oil or okay. vegetable oil. Okay. And just going to give that a swirl. 
Can you see how it's all automatically oh, changed colour? Yeah. I haven't done anything and it's that fast because we've got a good gas burner. Just a little bit of kitchen paper okay. and some wooden tongs. Wooden we don't want to burn your hands. No. And then just keep rubbing it like that. You see the blackened effect. Yeah. And so one of these woks, when you start seasoning them, they're going to look like this. That's been done. Ah. You see? And this has got this wok hay coating, wok hay. This is the smoky, blackened effect, the breath of the wok, the chi. Ah, so I like when, it. When you cook food, you like barbecued food? Yeah. Is there a lot of smokiness? Yeah. That's what you want. Same thing. Same thing. Wow, I've okay? never heard of it. Smoke is good. So 10, 15 minutes of doing this and your wok will be ready. Oh, okay. okay. Catherine, I know you're not keen on takeaway food. Yes. And to be honest, I'm not surprised. Okay. Because did you know <sighs> that the average mm. serving for a family four of sweet and sour pork and egg fried rice mm -hmm. contains, ta-da! No way! This amount of fat, 240 grams, 36 grams of salt, and 176 grams of sugar. 240 grams of fat. That's as much fat in 30 hamburgers. 30 hamburgers, no way. Would you like them? No, God, no, no thanks. <laughs> now I'm going to show you a healthier version, which is fantastic, much better than that. It was a lot healthier. <laughs> I'm going to make you my sweet and sour pork. Mm -hmm. Two pork loins. Yep. And what the first thing we're going to do is get rid of this fat, because we don't need it. No. Now I'm going to show you a trick mm. to help tenderize the meat. Yep. Just simply give it a good bashing, okay? And the other side. Now, I need a delicious coating on this. Okay. I'm thinking none of this batter deep fried stuff. Yeah. Something healthy. Okay. So I have here some dry roasted soybeans full of protein. Okay. If you grab a small handful Excellent. in there while I wash my hands. Yeah. Okay. And get pounding away. I like pounding away. Good. Yeah. Do these. Good exercise. I've never done this with soybeans, I have to say. Have a taste. You going to taste one first? <laughs> Delightfully crunchy, mm -hmm. full of flavour. If actually, you can't get these, nice. actually, let's put a bit more. Oh, go on. If you can't get these, then mm -hmm. you can use dry roasted peanuts, but the unsalted variety because we're keeping this healthy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is good. And a little bit mm -hmm. of some dry chili flakes. Okay. And a little bit of ground white pepper, mm -hmm. a tiny bit. Now, while you're doing that, I'm going to heat up the wok, get that nice and hot. All we're going to do is just place some on there. Go on, you could do this I one. Can do <laughs> <laughs> I can manage this. Make sure you really pat it down okay. so the coating sticks to the meat. Mm -hmm. The wok is smoking. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add a little bit of groundnut oil, then in with the pork. And we're going to cook that so it's lovely and browned on one side, about two minutes. Okay. I'm going to flip it over and cook it on the other side. High heat again. Again, high heat, but yep. we do need to watch it because we don't want anything to burn. So we need to keep our eye on it. Okay. I'm going to create a delicious sweet and sour sauce. Pineapples. Yeah. You can use tinned pineapple, but don't use any of the syrup from the tin. And then put that in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And some pineapple juice. Yep. About 125 ml and that's the sweet. We need lime for the sour. Mm -hmm. Roll the lime to break the flesh up inside. Squeeze the juice in. You mm -hmm. can do that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Making you work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I've got to get an appetite going. Your yeah. Now I've got more juice out of mine than yours. Oh, I don't want to start getting competitive <laughs> now. I'll be here all night making sure I get more juice. Blend that together. That's fine. That's oh, great. That's enough. Perfect. So now the pork is ready, and you can tell because it really firms up, you know, the meat firms up. So that's great. So what we need to do is just pop that on the side now, let it rest, and then we're going to make that natural sweet and sour sauce. Yeah. Okay, so work nice and smoking. We're not going to add any oil or anything. We're just going to simply cook the sauce and let that reduce slightly. Now while that's going to reduce, I'm going to make you my si hong qi dan. Do you remember that again? <laughs> <laughs> si Hongxi is Western red, which we say tomatoes. Tomatoes. Okay, which you're going to help me slice. Okay. About three of those. Three of those. How do you want and to slice? And Qi Dan is egg, and I'm which means I'm going to make you my 
egg fried rice. Now, I don't, I don't know a lot about Chinese cooking, admittedly, um, but something you always hear about, especially with Chinese takeaways and stuff, is the MSG that goes into food. Mm -hmm. And is that something that you would put in yourself, or...? No, no MSG. I mean, MSG looks like this. Oh. Okay, I brought this to show you. Really? And I know lots of people are concerned about it. It's, it's a like flavour enhancer. It looks like salt, it looks like crystal, but there's no need for it. MSG is naturally occurring in foods. Meats, tomatoes, even in cheese, yeah. savoury meatiness. Yeah. You don't need it to create that. You can get that flavour by using good fresh ingredients. Next ingredient for the egg fried rice is some chopped spring onion. So we've got a second wok here, and this wok here is non-stick, in with a little bit of oil. And there are many different ways of making a fried rice, okay? I like to cook the egg, almost like scramble it. Now, I've got here some jasmine rice. Yep. I'm using a variety of rice called jasmine because I like the nutty flavour, but any long grain cooked rice will do. And then we just give that a good mix. And now with the tomatoes, all of them in. In with some spring onions mm -hmm. at this stage. Nice um, colour again. I yeah, so. lovely colour. Oh. See, they're all very healthy. And in now, I think, with a little bit of light soy sauce. If you pass me the toasted sesame oil, mm -hmm. this is my secret in cooking a good fried rice. Mm, I like it. Mm -hmm. Gives it great fragrance and aroma. It just lifts the whole dish. Maybe a little bit of brown white pepper as well. A little bit of work for you before we serve up. I want you to make me a delicious salad. I've got a selection of some red peppers, yellow peppers, yep. sugar snaps, carrots, spring onions, mm -hmm. all in, mm -hmm. and some chopped up pineapple. Perfect. And to start with, some chopped pak choy. This is like your seven a day. Forget five a day. I was going to say. Seven a day. This is my week. All in one day. <laughs> you want to be super healthy and super strong when you go and compete. My coach will love you. I have to say. <laughs> so pleased. Now, to finish the salad, mm -hmm. I've got here some dressing. Yep. So in here, mm -hmm. there's some pineapple juice, some lime juice, flavours of the sweet and sour. Lovely. And some soy and some oil. And just to give that a good mix like that. I'm going to serve up a little bit of the rice. Some of this delicious sauce. Mm -mm -mm. You know the success of uh, British sport rests on your shoulders now. <laughs> no pressure. I'm nervous now. Are you? Confident? I am confident. Sure. I think the taste will deliver. Mm -hmm. The health aspect for sure. Mm. That's the best egg fried rice I've ever tasted, I have to say. All this fabulous protein in the pork. It's got everything, because it's got... We do have a lot of carbs, so it's nice it's got... Protein too? Mm-hmm. Balanced. Mm. Can you taste That's the amazing. protein? Mm. Yeah? Absolutely no need for takeaways, may I say. Okay. That is delicious. I want to try the sauce with this. Really it's just lightly dressed. Mm. Hopefully, and try a bit of the pineapple as well, so there's this sort of sweet and savoury element going in there. Mmm. This is super healthy. And wins hands down, I have to say. The taste is amazing. Were you sceptical, so, though? Um, I, was, I was hoping you could meet a takeaway, because the takeaway never looks overly appetising. Mm. So, but do I, I win say, gold, silver or medal? Oh, absolutely like, top step of the podium. <laughs> top you're, step. you're listening to your national anthem and watching the flag go up. Catherine's going back to the training lake to try out her new culinary skills. I'll catch up with her later to see what her teammates make of my sweet and sour pork recipe. Next time you're on your way home and you want to pick yourself up a Chinese takeaway, why don't you pick up some fresh ingredients to cook with instead? I mean, it's going to be healthier, lighter, tastier, fresher too. And it's just as quick as ordering from the takeaway. Now, to prove this point, I want to cook you one of the nation's favourite Chinese takeaway dishes. My version, though, of beef in oyster sauce. While I'm cooking, I'll tell you about five special ingredients that are used in most dishes that I think you should keep in your store cupboard ready to create authentic Chinese flavours. For my beef and oyster sauce, I need a good piece of beef fillet or salon steak and I just want to get the fat off. 
And then, just to help tenderize the meat, this is all you do. You could use a Chinese cleaver, or you could use a rolling pin. And then all I need is just to slice the beef into nice sort of thin bite-sized pieces into a bowl and season with light soy sauce. Light soy sauce is my first store covered ingredient and in Chinese cooking we use it like you do salt. Dark soy sauce is really used for colour. So I just need a teaspoon of this. Now if you're watching your sodium intake, there's a variety of low sodium light soy sauce that you can find. Now I'm going to add about a tablespoon and a half of a good oyster sauce. Traditionally, oyster sauce is made from boiling oysters so it's really concentrated and then it's evaporated and really thick and then it's cooked down with a bit of soy sauce and some spices. And if you can get a good quality oyster sauce, try and find one without any flavour enhancers or MSG in it. Now I've got here a vegetarian oyster sauce and this one's made from mushrooms. Now a lot of Chinese takeaways would use oyster sauce like a cooking sauce, but it's too much, it's too heavy. I prefer to use it rather as a condiment, so about a tablespoon or two is enough in any dish. Then add a pinch each of salt, ground black pepper and sugar. I'm using caster sugar and leave that to marinade while you prepare some spinach to serve the beef on. In with about a tablespoon or two of groundnut oil and this is my second store cupboard ingredient. Now for Chinese cooking I love to use a flavourless oil, a neutral base if you like to create all the different layers of flavours. Olive oil is just too strong. When the oil's smoking add some chopped garlic and chilli garlic, ginger, chilies, holy trinity of Chinese cooking. Now to stop the garlic and chili from burning, just give that a good toss. And then in with some washed spinach leaves. And all we want to do is just cook this for a few seconds, just to slightly wilt down the spinach. And give that a good mix. Just out onto the plate. Leave this to one side. Now to cook the marinated beef, wok on, oil in. Wok is ready, it's smoking, in with the beef. Now, when you put the beef in, just make sure it has time to just settle a little bit before you start to stir. And look at that. It's a gorgeous meat turning brown. I can smell the smoky, savoury sweetness of the oyster sauce. Now this is not going to take very long at all. While the beef starts to turn brown, I'm just going to add a splash of Shaoxing rice wine. This is my third store cupboard ingredient. And you can use any other cooking wine, but I love Shaoxing from the Shaoxing region in China. It just gives this gorgeous bittersweet edge to any dish and it just takes the rawness of meat or, or fish and any odours of meat and fish. And if you can't get Shaoxing rice wine, then I would use dry sherry. That's a great alternative. Before the beef comes out, I'm going to add a pinch or two of dried chilli flakes and these give a gorgeous kick. Now I love chilies in all their forms, fresh, dried, you name it. It's my fourth special store covered ingredient. So that's the beef done. Out on top of the spinach, like so. Finally, a topping of tangy mushrooms. Into the wok with some oil and add about 200 grams of oyster mushrooms. They'll soak up all the juices left from the beef. And you can add just a tiny bit of water just to help them cook and just create a bit of steam. Now my fifth store covered ingredient is Qingjiang black rice vinegar and it comes from the Qingjiang region. Now it gives dishes a wonderfully smoky, woody, tangy edge and so just a splash of this. Now if you can't get Qingjiang black rice vinegar then I would suggest you could use a good balsamic vinegar. That would work just as well. Okay, so mushrooms out and onto the beef, just like that. So there's my version of beef in oyster sauce, essentially three stir fries in one dish. I'm loving that. Now this dish is a good example of an important philosophy used in all traditional Chinese cooking. It's called balancing yin and yang. 
In Chinese philosophy, there are two opposing forces, yin and yang, and the Chinese try and live by a balance of these forces. So you think light, dark, male, female, hot and cold. We're always trying to achieve the perfect balance. So how does this work in terms of Chinese cooking? Well, ingredients have a yin or yang quality. So yin foods are ingredients such as watermelon or melons or cucumbers, radishes even. And yang foods are very much sort of meats or ginger, garlic, chilies. Broadly, yin are cooling while yang are heating. And in any dish, we're always trying to create the perfect balance. I mean, when I was growing up in Taiwan, I suffered terribly from nosebleeds, and that was because I was addicted to lychees, which are very, very yang in quality. So my grandmother would feed me a diet of mainly yin foods, such as cucumber juice. And miraculously, my nosebleeds disappeared. So the idea is not to have too much of any one thing and try and achieve the perfect balance. At the Olympic Rowing Squad's training base in Caversham, Catherine's preparing another good example of a balanced yin and yang dish, my healthy sweet and sour pork with egg fried rice. This is the easy bit. It's almost ready to try out on the rest of the squad. Beautiful. This is my own work. <laughs> Can I just remind people? Excuse me, I've been here watching over. Yeah, this, the, the ones that aren't as good maybe are yours. <laughs> The pressure mounts as the crew come forward for lunch. Okay, that's enough. Yeah, if you could pass the voice over, thank okay. you. I'd be, I'd just, yeah, chuck it in. Perfect. Okay, who's so going to be the first to try? Who wants to sample oh. it? Oh, like yeah. <laughs> come on, Helen. Who's really up? Helen's a lightweight. <laughs> oh, everyone's gathering round. Yeah. yeah. How's it look? Delicious. It smells amazing. What's it? Yeah. <laughs> it does smell yummy. The rice is really yummy. The rice is really good. Okay. <laughs> so, would you want Catherine to cook for you again? Yeah, yeah Catherine. Every day, Catherine. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you think you'll do this again? Do this? Mm. Cook all this. Do you know I would? I, I was a bit... Well, because I don't cook a lot, so I was a little bit unsure at first. Um, but actually, I really enjoyed it, and it tastes good, which surprised me, because I'm, I'm not very confident in my flavours and things. Um, probably good to getting advice from you, but I would, I would definitely do it again. Well, you got a gold medal from me. Oh, thank you! Thank you! So Catherine, a reluctant cook, proves just how easy it is for anyone to cook the simple but delicious dish. For more recipes and masterclasses, go to bbc.co.uk slash Chinese food made easy. Next week, I'll be cooking up some classic Chinese street foods, including a healthy version of crispy duck with a fresh plum sauce inspired by my birthplace. This is a Taiwanese delicacy because in the stores in Taipei, you'll have wafts of this in the street night market. There's a simple tasty vegetarian dish using fresh tofu. And we're going to chant. Why, why do we need to chant? That's tradition. <laughs> no. And an alternative to eating hamburgers at the races. It's second. Oh my god. Come on. Oh my god. <laughs> There's more next week here on BBC HD at the same time, 8 o'clock. And coming up next tonight, the second leg of the Mediterranean voyage with Francesco de Mosto.